Hello again, this is Helen. I think a lot of you follow me on Facebook. My page is Helen M. Stevens True Embroideries. And in this video, I'm going to show you something really rather special. This is my own signature honeycomb technique, which I invented some years ago. Up until now, I've only ever taught it in my live classes, so this is going to give a lot of you the chance to understand how it works. I often use it on dragonflies wings, but it does have other uses, which we'll look at later. But before you can actually work the honeycomb and then put the coloured effect over the top, you have to do a little bit of preparation. You want to give yourself the outline of the dragonfly's wing. And one of my new e-patterns produced with Vive Books does have a superb dragonfly in it. You need to work the outline in a very fine stem stitch. And then you need to work the inner structure of the wing, which is worked very simply, in this case, in just one, two, three, four radial stitches from the outside down in towards the body of the insect. So nothing there that any of you who've worked in my technique before won't have been familiar with. What I need you to do then is to think of any two of these long radial stitches as a sort of railway track. One, two tracks disappearing down into the distance. And you're going to lay sleepers across that railway track from the outside down in towards the centre. Now you can work this technique in any type of thread you like. It will work on a big bold scale even using something like wool. You can come down to using a single strand of good old stranded cotton or stranded silk. Or you can go down to a very delicate type of work, such as I'm doing here, with a single strand of very fine silk. These stitches want to be as closely as possible at right angles to your railway tracks. So your sleepers are going to come across those railway tracks and down towards the middle. Now, try not to pull those radial stitches too close together for reasons which will become apparent as we go along. So as you get down towards the centre of the wing and the body of the insect, you might want to just let them overlap those radial stitches by a little bit more. So there we are. That's the first stage of the technique. And it does look just like a railway track, doesn't it? Disappearing down into the distance. Now you're going to come back to the outside again. Now, obviously, you're never going to stitch outside the outline of your wing. Can you see where I'm bringing my needle through there? It's on the inside of that stem stitched outline. And you're going to go over the top of the first of those radial lines. And you see how that's just going to nudge that thread into place. And you're going to work these stitches brickwork fashion, that is in between the previous sleepers that you've worked, all the way along the top of the wing. So inside your outline and over whatever else presents itself. Sounds a bit complicated the first time you do it, but it's actually pretty easy. So inside your outline and over whatever else presents itself. Once you've practiced this a couple of times, you'll begin to get used to the little bit of tension that's necessary to actually keep those stitches in place. Inside your outline and over whatever else presents itself. Now, as we get down to the centre here, you'll see why I said you don't want to allow that first row of stitches to be pulled too closely together. Because as you take this stitch, for instance, you need to be able to get between those two radial lines to be able to pull 
that shape into place. So as you get down into the middle, you just need to be able to separate those central stitches. Here's the very last one on this course of bricks, if we can put it that way, and pull him into place. So that's the second stage. We haven't quite got a honeycomb yet, but here comes the magic. We're coming back out to the outside again. Now this time we're doing the underside of the wing. Just like before, you never want to stitch outside your outline. So you're bringing your needle up on the inside of that stem stitched outline. And now you're going to stitch over the top of whatever else presents itself. And there, for the very first time, you have your six sided beginnings of your honeycomb technique. Now, another little trick you need to remember. Now we're coming down to another radial stitch. So you're coming on this side of your radial stitch, in other words on the outside of that stitch, and over the fellow above him. So the easy way to remember it is that whenever you're stitching inside the wing, you stitch over everything. It's only when you're on the outside of the wing that you make sure you're stitching inside your outline. You can see how relatively quickly this builds up once you get into the swing. So this side of the railway track and over whatever else presents itself again, working brickwork fashion down in towards the centre. Again, we just need a couple more stitches there and we're down to the middle. Now, as I said earlier, you can use any type of thread to work this technique. Obviously, it rather depends on the scale on what you're working. If you're working a delicate little fellow like this, a fine thread is best. But if you want to be working on a big abstract type of picture, you can work with something much thicker. Now we're back to the outside again. Inside our stem stitched outline and over whatever else presents itself. We've got another outline here, so we're inside the outline and then we're over whatever else presents itself. Now we've got a radial stitch inside the wing, so we're coming to this side of it, can you see that? And then we're stitching over the top. And I'm beginning to wonder whether I'm going to run out of thread before I get to the end. Let's see whether I've been clever or not. Over and across both of them, so you can see how that lovely pattern is just falling into place. Another one. And one more and then the very last row that we're going to come to in just a moment will be inside the inner edge of the wing. So one more here over that. You can see how it's gradually just swinging round into place and now we're on our very last row. So inside our outline and over whatever else presents itself. Inside our outline and over inside and over. Whoops, and I've unthreaded myself. I think I did quite well to get to that stage. Over and now we're down to our last couple of stitches. One Two. And now we need to just finish this off on the back. See what a lovely even effect that's created for us. Matches beautifully the wing that I'd already made. And now we just need to flip this fellow up. And you'll see that on the back of the work, you've actually got a nice substantial little area of stitching there through which you can run your needle a few times and you do need to do it a few times because remember keeping your tension is paramount with this technique. Run that through just a few times and then snip him off. It's 
so when we bring this down there you can see the cunnies, the honeycomb stitch all worked and I'll be back in just a few moments to work some more magic down here <laughs> 